Kayvon asking, who does Van Dravis Jacobs remind you of? Is it his route running or yards after catch that makes him different? So the thing with the yards after catch is that's hard to quantify right now because they're not being tackled. Um, he certainly looks to have the wiggle and, uh, um, you know, the, the well, the speed and the quickness to make people miss. But, man, the route running um, and the just the smoothness, and I think we've said this a few times, I've compared the situations, but him specifically, uh, you know, I see some Rashad in him. I just, the smoothness coming out of breaks, um, I don't think he's as polished as Rashad was. Rashad was generationally polished very early on. He was just really good very quickly. Um, he was kind of ready-made when he got here, honestly. But I think he's got some of that in him. He's just, he's really smooth coming out of those breaks, man. He's really smooth. Yeah. And that burst, he's got that, he's got that extra burst that I don't know that anybody else on the team has on the offensive side of the ball anyway. Yeah, I can't think of like a comp come straight to mind with him. But I mean, for right now, it definitely is the route running. I mean, he just, he's getting open, man. He's, I didn't see him drop it today, but I take Corey's word for it. I'm, you know, trying to get the video uploaded to practice for you folks. So I'm not able to watch everything that's going on. I thought seven on seven, 11 on 11. He did all right. Maybe yeah, he did. He dropped a, uh, he dropped a, a, a pass in one-on-ones. Um, and then he dropped a fourth down pass in one of their drills, which the, the referee called it complete, but yeah. Norvell, and I, we all saw it. It was incomplete. Norvell waved it incomplete. Oh, no. So Norvell was right there watching it. So he saw it. And, and it was funny. There was a play in seven on seven red zone. I'd say the ball was at like the eight yard line. He catches a shallow cross and just does what he does. He, he, he hits full speed very quickly, makes a run to the pylon. And I think he gets in for a touchdown, but either way, he kind of reaches the ball out to try to get over the pylon for the touchdown and Norvell screaming at him to tuck the ball. So, again, even when he does something well, I think the head coach stays on him and, re and really wants him to pay attention to the finer details and just wants to stay on him and make him uncomfortable because I think the head coach realizes they have somebody that's – they don't want to get comfortable because they're going to need him in September and October and November. He is a I, – I just think he's a part of their plans, man. Uh, Greg Turner, how do uh, Omar Graham and DeMarco Ward look? So Graham's been pretty good for the spring, um, but I thought DeMarco Ward, in my opinion, had his best day today. He he made a couple of flash plays. Um, he's, he had an interception last week, but today he had a really good run fit um, on a cutback. Rodney Hill sped to the right, and then there was a hole, a crease, and he cuts back to the left. And it's Rodney Hill, man. He can go. And it's all, you the way it's set up, you're like, oh, this is going to be a cutback, and this is going to be wide open for a 60-yard run. And no, 31's right there waiting for him. A really good read for him to kind of go along and then stop, see what Hill's going to do. That's some natural instinctual stuff that uh, is good to see for a kid that, you know, obviously wasn't a five-star super-duper recruit. That was a good look. I've liked what I've seen from him. He also had a tackle for loss a few minutes after that. Uh, now, he, you know, look, he's obviously not running with the ones a lot of the time, so you're not seeing him against the the best lineman that Florida State has to offer, but I've I, – I think DeMarco might be a player, man. We'll see, but so far, so good. He has not looked out of place at all. I think he's looked pretty good. Yeah, I didn't have very high expectations for him, especially year one this early, uh, but you know, he's one of the guys that Norvell said that they just trust their evaluation on, and he's had a pretty solid day today, and he's had a couple moments in previous practices where we're like, all right, he's he's not out of place. Like He's, he's kind of fitting in nicely here, so uh, makes you excited for what he could possibly be. And, and to Corey's point as well, yeah, I think Omar's, Omar's had a pretty – he's been out there a lot. He's had a lot of reps, uh, and he's done all right. So those guys, three-star linebackers, shoot, they might end up being part of your core moving forward after a Bethune and Deloach. And, and DJ uh, Lundy too now. DJ Lundy's had some – he wears number 10 now. It just looks better on him. He looks faster and sleeker. Um, but, yeah, man, I think he's had a pretty good spring too. He's definitely better than he, – he's certainly better than he was – two and three years ago. Our guy, Kyle, get down or lay down. Spring is upon us. Do you see yourselves having a sports spring fling with any of these new to the program players? That being that you're interested and want to see more, but you're not ready to commit. So we, we like them. There's something, there's something brewing. There's some chemistry there, uh, but I don't know if she's the one kind of thing. Yeah, well, is yeah. that what this is asking? Yeah, yeah. Aslan, you go first. You have more. You have more uh, history with that than I do. 
Hey, hey. I, I dive in pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying. I mean, usually if I like a dude, I'm like, all right, that guy's going to be a good player. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sold on it pretty quickly. I'm not like a very need to see more data kind of a approach. I don't. I don't want to go like to, to the kicker situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, man, I don't. Know, maybe Shaheem. Like I do want to like Shaheem. I want to think that Shaheem's going to be able to pick up most of the slack left behind by Jamie Robinson. But probably need to see some more stuff. Yeah, but he's not. Play. He's not one of the new to the program. Players. Oh, all right, all right. I got my answer. All right, you and go then. And we talked about him today at practice a little bit, Tom and Jeff and I. Uh, Fintrell Cypress. Yeah. I have not seen now he's a guy that's played a lot of football that maybe doesn't take spring as seriously as other guys he you know it's his fourth fourth or fifth spring he's played a ton of college football he knows um you know the sport and the in the conference but uh has not had a great spring and yeah I, I would like to see i think he's going to be good i think he's going to start obviously he has the potential to be very good he's proven he's good but he has not proven it to me over the last five weeks so I'd like to see. So I'm not ready to commit to Fentrell Cypress yet. That's funny because I've, I've been kind of critical about his play. But I thought today he, I saw in one on ones he was all over Deuce. Uh, yeah. It was Deuce on Deuce crime. Uh, Deuce Cypress on Deuce Span. But I don't know if, you know, if Deuce Span is one of your top five wide receivers right now. So maybe that's not the, the best barometer. And then, and then he, he was, also got beat uh, earlier in that drill uh, for, a, for a touchdown, I believe. Uh, and then also late in the two minute drills, the last, at the end of practice. He gave up like a 35 yard or a portier, which really didn't compete. Like I want to see my all ACC caliber cornerbacks compete. So just throwing that out there, folks. I, I obviously he was very coveted and he's proven he can play at a high level in this conference, but I would not say he's played at a high level so far uh, for me. But maybe he's waiting until the lights come on on Saturday. I thought he was in on one of the interceptions today. Like he was, he was part of uh, the traffic jam. They got a ball tipped and then. Who picked that ball off? Uh, Duke, Amari and Cooper did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is that. But no, Corey's got the right answer. It is probably Fentrell Cypress. The Thanks. Nolway 23. Would A.J. Duffy improving enough to pass Tate Rodemaker for second string actually be a good thing? No. It, I, I would like to respond in what regard? Like, I, why, why would that be a good thing? Because Tate more, yeah. Yeah, they think Tate AJ's would leave. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, look, uh, he has not done that. If that's, the, I know that's not the question, but he has not done what that question, uh, the 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 premise of that question. Um, and in fact, um, Brock Glenn had a really good day today, in my opinion. I thought he made some really impressive throws in one on ones and a couple in seven on a, in seven on seven, and I think that's a battle. I'll just say that. I don't think it's a battle for number two right now. Yeah. But he ain't going away, man. Tate Tate Rodemaker's not going away, everybody. Yeah, and maybe that's the premise. That's the premise. But um, look, and and it's way too early to give up on somebody like A.J. Duffy. He's literally in still his first calendar year of college football. But, um, you know, he's not, in my opinion, he's not close to Tate Rodemaker right now. He's just not. Um, Now, Let's see what look what it looks like in the spring game. And keep in mind, they do work with different groupings, and they they're not it not it's not apples to apples. They don't say, "All right, Tate, you work with these ten guys for three snaps." Now, AJ, you go work with these ten guys for three snaps. I'm just telling you, in the spring so far that I've seen, uh, the gap between two and three, and I've said this before, I think the gap between two and three is as big as the gap between one and two. So hope, I mean, but but again, AJ can quarterbacks improve all the time, and he yeah, is better than he was last year. Yeah. So let's hope that that keeps that the improvement keeps growing and it starts grow. It, it picks up a little bit. The pace. I, I, I don't want to like nitpick this like question or whatever, but it, it would almost be like would Byron Turner improving enough to pass Patrick Payne for second string actually be a good thing? You well, know, I like, think maybe I the thought is that you don't you don't want to lose Duffy to like transferring. Maybe I think um, it'd be like. Thinking that AJ Duffy's ceiling is higher, so if right. he actually passes Rodemaker, is that like a good thing now? And I don't. That doesn't happen by him zipping by Rodemaker. Like Tate would have to. The only way that he could jump him is 
Tate would have to drop his level of play. So no, it would not be a good thing. And I don't know. I know he's only been in school for a year. I don't know that his his ceiling is higher than there's been nothing so far that we've seen, and we get to watch a lot of it that would make me think his ceiling is higher than Rodemaker's. Now I don't know how high his ceiling is either, but I know he's got the stronger arm, and I know he's faster. Now there's so much more to be playing quarterback than a strong arm and being fast, but. Tate's got that going for him. Um, he's a better athlete, in my opinion, and he's certainly got a stronger arm. He's got the strongest arm on the team, and he's done it on the road in a big moment. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what Rodemaker's ceiling is, uh, but right now, again, it's April 2023. So it, when when A.J. Duffy's accepted his Heisman in 2025, don't shoot the messenger. This is This was before he had done anything, but I have not seen enough from A.J. to think that his ceiling is higher than Tate Rodemaker's. Hey, Mark asked the question, go headlines. Corey, will they have an open air press box for the spring game? No, no. they won't. They uh, won't because you can't. Yeah, Mark, you're the best. Thank you for the for the donation. Yeah, thanks, Same Mark. With, uh, who was the guy that asked the baseball question? I don't remember his name, but why I didn't get to say thanks to him. But uh, um, I will. A right. A right. Yeah. I Not think A wrong. A right. Yeah. Um, but Mark from Naples. Uh, yeah, man, that's one of my, I hope, if Alford is going to do some serious renovations, I open, got, oh, I'm with you on that. Oh yeah, well, it's going to be open. It's also going to be in the corner. Well, that's like, we're going to lose yeah. the. Is that right? Yeah, you're right. Well, I'm, I'm sure, man. There's no. no that's no, not what you do. No stadium that's I been know, renovated in the know. last 20 years has put the media but anywhere near the 50 yard line. They have those 1974 suites across the way from the press box yeah, that man. they could do something with. I'm too. sure they're going to be sold too. Right, we're well, we're going to be. Saying. We're going to be like in Gainesville. We're going to be in the corner. Also wants to know if we're going to handle LSU comfortably or will it be a street fight? It'll be a street fight. LSU's good. That's going to yeah. be a great game. Both teams will take that game very seriously. Both teams got a lot better after that game last year. Simultaneously, both kicking ass from that point forward, really. I, I We didn't know how good that win was no, at the time. Yeah, and and I, th I just think that game's going to be awesome. I really think that we're going to, if you're a Florida State fan, I think you're going to be nervous in the fourth quarter. Not in a bad way. It's just that I think it's going to be that kind of close. You can't be more nervous than you were in the final 30 seconds. Yeah, but that was weird because you were really comfortable for a lot of that game yeah. until they fell to pieces in the fourth quarter. If you oh, don't fumble sweet. on the inch line, you yeah. blow LSU out. We thought we were going to be calling for a new coach. Yeah, it was a, that was tough, man. And he knew it, too. That's why he celebrated like they won the Super Bowl. Shaheem Brown, man. Him and Shaheem, he needs to – there needs to be an NIL deal. I think with he just Norvell jogs Shaheem. past him and gives him $100 every now and again. <laughs> just, yeah. just thinking about you today, Shaheem. Yeah. I got an $8 billion contract in yeah. large part because of your right hand. Yeah. So, here you go. Here's but, I mean, bills. you know, seriously, I think that both teams are going to want to win. Everybody wants to win every game. But I think that will be an intense game. And they're both equipped to do something about it. They both have talented mobile quarterbacks. They both have really physical offense and defensive lines. They both have skill players that are going to go on to the league. I, I that game will be one of the more entertaining games. And they of the have season. LSU probably has the best player on the field in that Perkins kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he's a stud. But uh, you, you, Florida State has. Could I mean, there's be, a man. lot Florida of NFL guys. I was going to say there's some dudes over yeah. here. And uh, Florida State's got some real NFL guys, and Florida State might have the best offense. Probably will have the best offense that LSU sees all season. I would think. Marcus has added to the chat and contribution, gents. I just want to wish you a great day. Maybe ask what the worst case scenario is for the season, and how we get there. Number thirteen injury is the only path. Hey, man, come on, Marcus. We appreciate okay. that, but let's not throw that out in the ether. Yeah, don't put uh, that out there in the universe. Uh, yeah. Don't you put that on us, Ricky Bobby. I would I say, would, yeah. That. Yeah, if he got hurt, I mean, hell, that's a problem. Schedule's still light enough. They win 10 games, even without him, I think. But uh, yeah, I don't know about oh, that. Oh, I do. I think that you can accidentally win nine. You, you'd lose to Clemson. Uh, yeah, you could get there. Yeah, you could get there. Oh, you could get there. I just wouldn't yeah. say it's an absolute. No, I'm not saying it's an absolute, but you'd likely win 10 games. You, you're going to beat the bejesus out of several teams. Uh, just handing the ball off with this offensive line and that back. Yeah, listen, you wouldn't ask Tate to do too much. Uh, I guess if you have, you know, again, I mean, that's true with any team, Marcus, to be fair. Uh, let's say you lose a, okay, worst case scenario and without being doomsday. You lose a squeaker, which could easily happen to LSU. That could be a toss-up yeah. game. You lose on the road to Clemson at night. If you lose those two games in the that's first month, good... it could affect a lot yes. of things about the team. Yep. Yeah, and then all then of a sudden. You're 21st in the country, and your expectations that were so high. They're shot. Yes, and then how do you respond? Well, yeah. and that's something that, and Ira, we brought this up before. We all watch it, and we've seen it at FSU before when FSU was great. But when you're a perennial power, 
and your goal is to compete for and play in national championship games or the college football playoff these days, if that is stripped from you, the ability to do that is taken from you early in a season. We see teams go drastically different directions. You know, guys will just go through the motions and they get beat on a random Saturday against somebody who it means a lot more to because they already had an upset loss in the season and the chance for them to play in the aforementioned national championship game is gone. Guys will go through the motions. It does happen when that is your one and only goal. And I'm not saying that's the case for this team, but I'm saying they do expect to be in the conference championship. Yeah. They do expect to win 10 or more games. They do expect to be in the national conversation. If you lose two of your first four games and the only two t good teams you play you lose to, you're right. You may have to face that reality. Like, can I get this team up for the rest of the games? The other thing, and this was brought up to me by somebody that we've, I think we've even talked about it before, but it was brought up to me by somebody at uh, practice the other day, a, a high school football coach who I know. Um, you know, he pointed out just, you know, as playing devil's advocate, that you got all these guys back, and that's awesome. But what we just saw with North Carolina basketball that just because you get everybody back mm. doesn't mean everything else stays the same. And right. that's not to say that we don't expect that. I don't think it's going to happen. I think this team is still hungry. It's a different world than North Carolina basketball. And you're not talking about five guys. You're talking about a whole football team. Right. But um, that's one thing. Again, if you're things to guard against is is that kind of a scenario you would also hope though that like you know getting to the final four and being like i don't know a couple minutes from the national championship is different than playing in the cheese it bowl you would think you would hope that and also even if you lose to clemson you lose those first two games in september you still can win the acc championship which hasn't been done here in almost a decade yeah man but that's gonna take a hell of a pep talk i mean i don't know really you, think you would like to not think that Corey, but i think they believe they're a they're a playoff team yes 